raises alarming questions about the ability of corporations to influence their employees' voting decisions. In an article titled Big Brothers Thought Control at Coke, Mark Ames and Mike Elk report on an urgent letter that Coke Industries sent to most of its 50,000 employees on the eve of the November elections. The letter advised them on whom to vote for and warned them of the dire consequences to their families, their jobs and their country should they choose to vote otherwise. Coke Industries is run by billionaire brothers Charles and David Coke. They helped to bankroll the Tea Party movement and dozens of other right-wing causes. Coke Industries and other corporations are legally allowed to pressure their workers to adopt their political views at the ballot box because of last year's Citizens United Supreme Court decision. The ruling granted free speech rights to corporations and effectively removed regulations preventing employers from politically manipulating their workers. In practice, employers can also fire workers who refuse to attend political seminars or dare to voice their dissenting opinions too loudly. For more before we're joined by the authors of the expose, Mike Elk and Mark Ames. Both are contributing editors to The Nation. Mike joins us from Washington, D.C., Mark Ames from here in New York. Um, Mark, let's begin with you. Start off with the documents that you got. Um, well, as we were investigating the story, it was uh, Mike Elk, my, my partner, um, uh, on the story, who um, uh, got a hold of this newsletter that was sent out. It was October 4th of last year, um, and it was sort of an election packet um, dated October 4th uh, with a cover letter from the, the COO and president of Coke Industries, which is the head of this giant conglomerate, um, saying that for the first time we feel that these elections, that is last November's elections, are so um, urgent and, and um, you know, we're in such a dire situation that we're actually sending out this entire voting packet, including a list of candidates um, in federal and local elections that uh, we believe uh, we urge you or we, we strongly recommend that you vote for. Um, and, of course, most of the candidates, I mean, of the 19 candidates on the, um, the list that we obtained, which is for the Washington state elections, uh, of 19 candidates, 16 were Republican and, um, you know, very Tea Party Republican. And of the three Democrats for local races, two were from a, uh, a Democratic, a right-wing um, faction of the Democratic Party uh, called the Roadkill Caucus. Um, I guess, you know, this is like their blue dog, but roadkill. I don't know who the roadkill is in this case. Um, and then along with that, there was a bunch of really pretty bizarre and disturbing sort of John Birch Society-like um, propaganda about, uh, you know, the, the just a paranoid vision of the world um, in which free markets and freedom are constantly under attack from, you know, EU bureaucrats and uh, the liberal media and all this other stuff, and sort of trying to warn or trying to advise um, uh, uh, their workers, um, you know, who to vote for, what to do. And, uh, and on top of it, one of the most bizarre parts was a, a, a sort of an essay from Charles Koch, he's the head of the company, um, telling, telling workers who he thought the best president of the 20th century was. And he named Warren B. Harding and Calvin Coolidge, uh, but he named them sort of as one president, one administration, as the best president of the 20th century. Um, and he blamed Herbert Hoover for the crash and for starting socialism in America. It's, it's the most bizarre thing you've ever read in your life. Uh, Mike Elk, you are a labor reporter. Talk about the significance of the letters being sent out to uh, the employees of Coke Industries around the country. Well, basically, what we've done now is politicize the workplace. And when you politicize the workplace, you open the door for political discrimination. Uh, Citizens United, I mean, this letter is just the tip of the iceberg, but Citizens United has created a situation in which employers can send letters to their employees threatening them. I mean, basically, in this letter, they say, if you don't vote Republican, uh, we're questioning whether the company will be able to continue to survive and prosper. A ridiculous statement for the Koch brothers to make, who more than doubled their profits in the last three years. Uh, but you've politicized the workplace, and so now you can send these letters to people. You can also have them attend captive audience meetings. And we know the Koch brothers are starting to do this. They make their workers uh, at this Georgia Pacific warehouse attend seminars on libertarian free market ideology, where they tell them, you know, wages rate getting up too high, well, that hurts productivity, that hurts growth. Uh, and they make them attend these bizarre seminars. They stamp on the back of every time card the ten principles of Coke Industries. So there's a lot of heavy, captive audience political meetings. The workers 
don't have a choice whether they want to attend these meetings or not. They're forced to join, attend these meetings because in this country, um, you know, you in 49 states, you can fire employees at will, meaning for any reason whatsoever. So the workers are forced to attend these meetings, and this creates a very dangerous standard. So if the boss is constantly talking about politics in the workplace, and all of a sudden a bunch of your coworkers are wearing Republican buttons, does that mean you have to wear one too? If all of your other coworkers are going out and volunteering with your boss on the weekend for GOP candidates, does that mean if you want to get a raise, you have to go out and volunteer for a GOP candidate as well? We've created a really dangerous situation of intimidation in the workplace. And this is something that we haven't seen since going back, well, to the era of Calvin Coolidge since the 1920s. And this is a, a very scary situation for more, most workers who now find themselves in a situation in which they can't voice their political views. But it's also scary because we've seen how effective in anti-union drives these captive audience meetings can be. Uh, in most anti-union drives, they have about 11 of these meetings. And for a lot of workers who who quite frankly don't have the time to listen to democracy now or, or can't get it, uh, the, they get their news in snippets, you know, the newspaper here or there, cable news here or there. But if your boss is sitting down with you for meetings, dozens of meetings before an election, showing you fancy PowerPoints, fancy charts, and, you know, cooked up numbers about how voting for Republicans will help your company and save your job, uh, you're very likely to do it if you're a low-information voter. So this presents a real threat. And unions... Unions can't come into the workplace and do this type of thing. Unions are absolutely forbidden from doing this. Uh, but an employer can fire you if you don't attend these types of meetings. So it's a very dangerous situation. I wanted to read just a few of the excerpts uh, from the letters that went out. Um, the first, as co-company employees, we have a lot at stake in the upcoming election. Each of us is likely to be affected by the outcome on November 2nd. That's why, for the first time ever, we're mailing our newest edition of Discovery and several other helpful items to the home address of every U.S. employee. Um, here is another one, another of the quotes from the letters. The following candidates in your state are supported by Coke Companies and Coke PAC, the Political Action Committee for Coke Companies. We believe these candidates will best advance policies supporting economic freedom. And here's another one, another excerpt of a letter. For more than 40 years, Coke Industries has openly and consistently supported the principles of economic freedom and market-based policies. Unfortunately, these values and principle point of view are now being strongly opposed by many politicians and their media allies who favor ever-increasing government. Even worse, recent government actions are threatening to bankrupt the country. And the facts are that the overwhelming majority of the American people will be much worse off if government overspending is allowed to bankrupt corrupt the country, they said. And one last. Citizens who are openly critical of the European Union bureaucracy in Brussels or the out-of-control government of the United States, they write, are being shouted down by politicians, government officials, and their media and other allies. These are just some of the quotes. Mike, um, if you're an employee, so your employer is giving you their point of view. Yeah, and that's, that's an important to bring, point to bring up. But this is your boss. And, you know, in this kind of desperate economy, how, how do you say no to your boss? Uh, and, and who's to say, you know, how much they're going to do? Say somebody speaks up in the workplace. Say they disagree with their boss in one of these meetings. And then the boss decides to fire them. That sends a very scary signal to the rest of the workers right before an election. And we know that, you know, in anti-union campaigns, that when the employer gives his point of view, uh, it kills union campaigns. We see, I've been involved in campaigns where, you know, when, when we initially file for an election, we'll have 70 percent of the signatures. Unions will have 70 percent of the signatures saying, hey, we want a union. And after three or four months of this type of meetings and mailings and propaganda, you know, the majority of workers will vote against because they're scared of their boss and they're scared of taking on their boss. And they typically don't have the protection of a union where they can disagree with their employer. Mike, why are the Koch brothers so important? The Koch brothers are so important, in my opinion, because the Koch brothers are really, they, they set the trend in the industry. I mean, they had these meetings in Aspen and the one they just had out in California, where they set the trend with the rest of the industry in terms of what they're going to do in terms of pushing politics. Um, Lee Fang, I think, Progress, put a, uh, a memo up on Think Progress yesterday from an operative who's been tied to the Koch industry, saying that, really, after Citizens United, corporations need to start using their employees more to push their politics. 
So they're going to start using the, the three million supervisors that work in this country to directly push politics on the job before elections. And this is something we haven't seen in, in American history since we passed the National Labor Relations Act in the 1930s. Let me add what I think uh, is so unusual and important um, yeah, sorry, uh, about um, the Koch brothers, uh, because people say, well, we have different billionaires. I mean, it's true, this country is turning more and more into a sort of oligarchy. What makes the Koch brothers different is how politically um, conscious and astute they are. There are two generations of political oligarchical activity, let's say. Their father, Fred Koch, was one of the founders of the John Birch Society. And, you know, the Tea Party and a lot of the libertarian stuff is basically the John Birch Society without the sort of the racism, anti-Semitism, anti but the, base, the, the same basic um, idea behind both, which is roll back the New Deal, roll back rights for workers, roll back rights for everybody the else. The father's organization. The father's and, and the son's. And so these, unlike other um, politically active, you know, billionaires in this country, these guys understand how politics uh, creates wealth. And, and what a great, uh, the opposite of a vicious circle it is for them and, and the vicious circle it is for the rest of us. So, you know, you've seen, the, the, uh, according to Forbes at least, the brothers, uh, Charles and David Koch, their combined uh, wealth was $28 billion in March of 2009, and now it's $45 billion. So just two years after they invested in the Tea Party, their wealth has gone up 60 percent. They are combined, the fourth richest, you know, combined person in the world. Um, last month, the website thinkprogress.org published video showing Massachusetts Republican Senator Scott Brown thanking conservative billionaire David Koch for his campaign donations and asking for more money in 2012. The video was shot at a recent dedication of MIT's David H. Koch Integrative Cancer Institute. Uh, Michael, can you talk about the role of the Koch brothers um, um, that have played overall in right-wing politics, especially in regards to Governor Walker of Wisconsin's attacks on collective bargaining? Well, they were big funders of, of Governor Walker. I'm, you know, they provided a lot of money for Governor Walker, and they've provided a lot of money for the anti-union think tanks that have sprung up around the country. And we saw in the Supreme Court election in Wisconsin, you know, one of the groups that got involved donated, you know, $400,000 right before, you know, the last two weeks of the election, which really swung the election back in the Republican uh, David Prosser's favor in the Wisconsin State Supreme Court. And we've seen the Koch brothers as the overall biggest funders of, of the anti-union movement in, in this country and really the leaders of it.